Hey everybody, it's Eric at Nailed or Failed Reviews. Today we're in the office doing an upgrade on the old desktop back there and doing a review on this Asus Hyper M.2 PCI expansion card. This is the Gen 4 version that can do PCIe 4 speeds. And today we're gonna be doing a review and unboxing on this. We're gonna be setting it up with four one terabyte Intel 665P M.2 SSDs. We're gonna talk about what other accessories you need to pick up how to set it up on an X570 chipset motherboard, as well as how to get into the BIOS and successfully set up a RAID 0 drive as a scratch drive. Let's check it out right now on Nailed or Failed Reviews. Hey everybody, thanks again for joining us today here in the office at Nailed or Failed Reviews. Now again, we're gonna be doing a review and unboxing or an initial review and unboxing on this Asus Hyper PCIe expansion card for M.2 SSDs. And we're doing this review because we recently ran out of space on our computer and we were researching how to, you know, create a really fast RAID setup and realizing that we had the X570 chipset AMD motherboard along with a Gen 3 Ryzen processor, a 3900X, we realized that we were able to take advantage of the lane specifications that you can set up in the BIOS to actually run this card with a RAID 0 setup with all four drives installed on it. So if you've come across this video, you probably have been researching uh, one of these uh, PCIe expansion cards. You might've been researching how to set up a RAID uh, drive on your X570 uh, chipset motherboard. The other information you're gonna find is a couple years old from people like Linus Tech. There's also a video that I'll put a link for is from this guy who has a channel called Build or Buy. All their information that they're talking about other than Build or Buy is about setting up uh, RAID drive setup as an OS drive. Okay. Now Builder Buy, he's the only video out there that actually talks about the Gen 3 version of this card, and he's using a gigabyte um, motherboard. But he talks about setting it up as a scratch drive, which is what we want to do. So far, the testing I've done has been successful. We've actually got this thing to write at over seven gigabytes per second. That's pretty good. You know, I'll definitely take it. It's uh, again, because of the components that are in this computer, the X570 AMD chipset, as well as the Ryzen Gen 3 processor. So what does all this stuff mean? Well, let's get into that after we do the unboxing and show you guys some of the other accessories and things that you might wanna pick up when you're talking about buying this Asus Hyper M.2 PCIe expansion card. All right, let's get into the unboxing of this Asus Hyper M.2 by 16 Gen 4 card. So what is this thing? Well, this is the second generation of this card, the Gen 4, and it's called Gen 4 because it is able to do PCIe 4.0 speeds. It can also do PCIe 3.0 speeds, and its main purpose is to mount up to four M.2 SSD hard drives to this, okay? and start with the card is pretty basic right it's not super special it doesn't have its own brain on here so if you plug this into your computer basically your computer is not going to know what to do with it and you need to tell your bios and windows what to do with the drives and the card so we're going to get into that later but finish the unboxing here there were a few things that i wanted to point out about when i got this card in so first thing i noticed when i got this card in was that the boxes are not sealed. So be aware that these boxes, unlike the majority of computer components out there, are not cellophane wrapped. They are not taped shut in any manner. I actually bought two of these because the first card that I bought, this one right here, when I took the heat sink off of it, it looked like somebody actually sneezed on it. And that's totally not cool. You know, I got an easy return through Amazon and they hooked me up and sent out a new card the next day. So it was really great. So just be aware that you gotta look out for something like that the box, because the boxes aren't sealed. The other thing I wanna point out about that in the same, same breath is the static bag. The static bag, because of the size of it, is, is also uh, folded up 
but it's not taped shut. So just be aware that it's not sealed or taped shut at all. It's folded in on itself. Again, when I got my first card in, the fold was on top and it was all janked up and it definitely looked like somebody had messed with it. So those were just two things that I wanted to point out. All right, now let's get into the card. What is it? So again, it's a full size PCIe expansion card. So that's by 16 size. It can hold up to four M.2 SSDs, any size it can hold. So you can see here we have uh, the screw holes for any of the size M.2s. It does have a built-in fan. This is obviously a proprietary fan. So if it ever goes out, you know, you're probably never going to find a replacement. It does have a switch on the back of it to turn that fan on and off. So be aware of that. That's kind of nice. The really nice thing about this uh, PCI card is the heat sink. Again, because you're mounting four M.2 SSDs, those can run super hot and they have the uh, standard built-in uh, backer stickers on there to transfer that heat better to the heat sink. And then this is a big old uh, 10 inch, 10 and a half inch heat sink. This is aluminum. It's the same size as a video card. So be aware that this is just as big as a video card. And again, this is two pieces. So if you look inside of here, which you can't see too well on video, but you have the main heat sink that has the heat fins cut out of it. And then basically what you're looking at the top piece is like a cap that goes over that. That creates a really nice hollow area for the fan to sit in. And so when the heat sink is mounted on here with the six screws that mount from the backside, it will actually, the fan uh, pushes that air right down that channel on the inside. And it's gonna work really nice to keep all of those SSDs nice and cool, let's hope. The other thing that this comes with is the M.2 screws. So four screws, as well as the standoffs that you're gonna need to put in whatever uh, position you need it for. And then you also notice that it comes with two packages of extra pads. So when you take this card, when you take the heat sink off of it, you'll notice that there is already some pre-installed uh, foam pads under where the, the uh, SSDs would sit. Those are there pre-installed for dual-sided SSDs, okay? So if your SSD, like these Intel 665s and 660s, they are single-sided uh, M.2 SSDs, and so you need to install these secondary foam pieces right on top of the pre-installed foam pieces. It says that in the instructions, it's very plain and simple. Just to put those on there if you have a single-sided M.2 SSD, and that'll properly support the hard drive. So be aware of those things. This is really nice though that they include those M.2 screws because those are super tiny and you know that's a kind of a pain in the butt for some of those manufacturers that don't include them. All right, so what are some of the other things that you might want to consider picking up when you're talking about installing one of these cards well again because of its weight you might want to pick up some of these support brackets so i got my scale out here because i just want to show you guys on camera how heavy this thing is and so we'll tear it here we're starting on pounds we're at 1.17 pounds that is 18.8 ounces 532 grams so that is a pretty heavy card and again, you're gonna to wanna to pick up some of these support brackets. We got two versions here from the Up Here brand. The first uh, version we have is just a simple stamped piece of aluminum that they then anodize black and put their name on it. And this is gonna mount with the back screws that hold your cards into the, uh, the case there. Really simple, you know, very lightweight, nice looking piece of uh, equipment there. The other style is this Up Here, also from Up Here. This is a pole style that has a magnetic base. This will sit on the bottom of your computer case and then you can adjust these two little uh, fins here to wherever you need to. This does include a secondary piece. I, I don't have handy, but you can screw on one here to make it longer if you need to. So that's gonna do it for the accessories. We'll have those affiliate links down below. Again, we greatly should appreciate the support. If you decide to purchase any of those, please use our affiliate links. All right, that's gonna do it for the unboxing. Let's get into mounting these hard drives onto the controller card and then getting it properly installed in our computer. Again, we're gonna go over some of these components that are required to make this thing work properly. So let's get into that.
Okay, so before you start to tear down anything and get the card installed, there's a few other things that you need to do inside of Windows as well as the BIOS so that you can, for one, see your monitor and get the hard or get the motherboard to properly recognize what you're doing. So first thing you need to do, again, before you tear down anything, you can get your drives installed in the card, but do not install the card yet. All right, everybody, big in. turn of events here. As you can see, I got some different clothes on. My hair looks a little bit longer, shaved a few times. It's been a full two weeks that we've been working on this card, trying to replicate our first successful setup of a 3.8 terabyte RAID 0 drive on the number one PCIe slot. Bifurcation was set up at quadruple four, and we had two NVMEs installed on the motherboard, one for our OS, one is a secondary media drive, and then three spinning drives hooked up to our uh, SATA connectors. These are old laptop drives. Had all that working, did some benchmarking on it. We were able to hit over seven, seven gigabytes of write speed on the RAID 0, and only a little over two on the uh, read speed for some reason, not sure why it was so slow on the read. And all the other drives were working well. We were getting good transfer speeds from these old uh, spinning drives and whatnot. Then we went and turned it into a two terabyte RAID 0, did some benchmarking on that. Then we turned that into regular volumes so that we could test the speeds as if you just use this as like a controller card to so that the computer could see just you know regular volumes of hard drives. Did some benchmarking on that. And then when we tried to tell it to turn back into uh, RAID in the BIOS, as well as uh, the RAID drivers in Windows, didn't like it at all. Windows crashed on us every single time. We probably installed Windows eight times in the last two weeks, uh, three times, three or four times yesterday, actually making screen capture videos for AMD. So we have about a 50 minute video of doing the process from a fresh Windows install secondary camera to show them the BIOS that we're actually sending over to AMD. We've already been on the phone with them and MSI and ASUS about why this isn't working correctly and no one can give us any answers. So number one, we're going to make a second video for anybody out there who actually wants to see the video footage we have when we first did this two weeks ago of getting the RAID settings in the BIOS set as well as the Windows drivers set to get windows to recognize this because you have to remember this is a dummy card it has no information on it to tell windows what to do windows only knows what to do with this after you set up a raid drive in your bios and after you install amd raid drivers into windows onto those hard drives so that windows can you know see how see what they are supposed to be and that's how it turns this into a raid drive you also have to be able to set bifurcation in your uh, BIOS, and that means being able to set the number one slot to split up the lanes that it has available so that it can see each hard drive, all four drives. That usually only happens if you have at least a, uh, I don't know, X90 or 399 chipset or higher. We're talking about a X570 chipset with a Gen 3 Ryzen processor 3900X. So that's the only way you're going to get some of this to work even right off the bat. And on top of that, your speeds are going to be always limited by how fast your hard drive speeds are. So these Intel 665Ps are only rated still, even though they just came out earlier this year in 2020, they're still only rated to 3.0 PCIe speeds. So you're only going to see those that fast of a speed. Right now, using them as just regular volumes, we're seeing a little over two gigs of write and read on these brand new Intel drives. So it's pretty pretty much okay for me, you know, if we're talking about using this as storage and to transfer files back and forth for doing video editing or, you know, downloading 100 gigs of videos off of our camera to do editing, then I'm kind of satisfied with that. Now, I'm not satisfied with the fact that this doesn't work because I really would have liked to try to use this as a RAID drive for my video editing. I will point out though that when we did have this set up as a RAID drive, we put the DaVinci to do its rendering and its exporting onto it. 
and we did not see any increases. We kind of had that, uh, you know, theory that we weren't going to really see that that big of an increase. And because of the way that the CPU does the majority of rendering and then it's writing really small blocks of data, tons of small blocks, but small blocks of data to the hard drive, it's it's going to be able to write it really fast to pretty much any hard drive. And then when you talk about the export, you know, we really didn't see any increase in the um, or decrease in the amount of time that it took to do export. We did do benchmarks, just regular uh, AS SSD benchmarking and uh, crystal uh, dismark benchmarking, and we got pretty much normal results. You know, we're not going to get into all that because you can go out there and read these other websites that have tested all these Gen 3.0 and uh, 4.0 speed uh, hard drives, and really from what they're seeing, there is hardly any increase or decrease in uh, load times for games or uh, programs or whatever. Now, when you talk about the information that's out there about these cards already from a few years ago, even four years ago now, you think that this would be easier to do and it's not. Now, the information that's out there talks mostly about setting this up as an OS drive. There's no way I would recommend doing that. With the way that this is so unstable, when you talk about Windows, uh, automatically applying drivers, I could see this thing crashing your OS drive if you uh, installed a new SATA connected drive, if you changed out one of your NVMe drives, or even if you possibly just updated some drivers on any of your, any of your hardware in your computer, that could easily mess up Windows. And from the way that my Windows has been responding, Windows 10 uh, Pro responding to just telling drivers, hey, go back and take this regular storage device driver it, it just crashes every single time. And even a, a thumb recovery stick won't work. I have to do a fresh install of Windows every single time. So I wouldn't recommend doing this for an OS drive. So where does that leave us? Well, I recommend doing this if you want to create more space on your computer and you're looking to go to all NVMe drives. You know, basically that's where it's going. But the problem is the same thing that we've been facing for years now with hard drives is that as they get bigger, they get more expensive you need more space, then you're saying, okay, well, it's great that I could pay, you know, 80 bucks for an NVMe or 90 bucks for an NVMe. Do I have a, a slot on my motherboard to actually install it? My motherboard only has two M, uh, NVMe slots. You know, a lot of them out there only have one. So I have a feeling that some of these cards might start playing a bigger role in people's lives because you're saying, I don't want to deal with spinning drives anymore. I mean, even, when we were talking about, um, we'd bought this the other day, we had to go to Micro Center because we bricked our uh, C drive basically and had to install it in a different computer to clear it. Had to get a NVMe adapter, four terabyte drive for $89. You know, granted it's spinning, but we do need some physical backup for if we ever get a RAID drive set, successfully set up again. And we have some backup partitions set up for Windows and DaVinci. So, you know, I have a feeling it's going to be a good investment, even on top of the 400 that we spent for this card and those four one terabyte drives. But speaking on that point, that's where, I, again, I say that this is sort of a good upgrade or a good uh, component for people out there, because we talk about hard drive prices. You can get a one terabyte drive NVMe from anywhere from 83 to about 130. Two terabytes are costing anywhere from 180, 200 to well over 250. Four terabyte drives cost over $700 and eight terabyte drives NVMe cost over $1,400. So you're saying to yourself, you know, are you going to spend 400 or $700 on a four terabyte NVMe just to have it? I'm not going to do that right now. I don't have the cash to be spending that type of money for one drive. And yes, I could have spent that, but are you going to spend $89 or over 700 for four terabytes? Well, I spent 400 for this card and for four one terabyte drives. So I think I'm coming out pretty good. I'm still getting, you know, like I said, two gigabyte write and read speeds as from this working as a just a volume access card. And again, those are going to be based on uh, your hard drive always. So these hard drives, again, are only rated to PCI 3.0 speed. So that's all we're going to get out of them. So again, I recommend the card if you want to use this for volume storage and you're trying to get away from spinning drives. 
if you can set that bifurcation up and you have a good processor and the, and the good chipset, you're going to be able to do this and you're going to like the results. If you're doing video editing or photos and you're using this as storage and you're transferring, you know, files between one, one drive and another on this card, or even between your uh, motherboard cards, then you're going to like the speeds. We just transferred a hundred gigabyte folder of videos that we've been recording for this video from our uh, C drive over to uh, the one, one of the drives on this card. And it did uh, 98 gigabytes in one minute and two seconds. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it was, it was writing at uh, over a gig for pretty much the whole time. It hit two gigs write speed for a while. I do recommend it if you're trying to, again, expand your storage and you're trying to stick with all NVMEs. Again, you can get away with a four terabyte setup right now for $400. So that's over half less than you could buy a four terabyte single NVMe drive for. Please help to support the channel by purchasing through our affiliate links down below. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna check out the video on how to set this up in the BIOS and the Windows. Like if you like, subscribe. Thanks for watching Nailed or Failed Reviews.